a friend of mine said, I've met a bloke called Christopher Blackwell. He's, he was at Harrow School and he's come over and he started a record. He's got Jamaican record artists. And I've said to him he ought to meet with you. So I met with this guy, Chris Powell. And Chris said that what he was trying to do was to get English artists to put onto his label. So I said, um, look, you've got no chance. You can't start a record label because it's a cartel. There's EMI, etc. Deccan, Phillips. I said, but what you can do is you can form a production company, sign up artists, and then lease them to one of the majors. So he said, yeah, really? I said, that is, if you want to go in that, that's the direction. There's a man called Alan Freeman. He had Nixa Records, and he nearly went bankrupt with Jimmy Young's Too Young. It just won't, you know, you, you can't, I, sure, believe you me, you won't be able to do it. So, I also talked to Harry Robinson about this. And um, Harry was a very, very canny Scot. And he said, yeah, okay, Chris, let's do it. Uh, we'll form a partnership and we'll call it BPR, Blackwell, Piers and Robinson. Um, there was Chris Blackwell uh, with, uh, with Ireland going around to either Brixton or wherever with Jackie Edwards, who was his manservant, he was a singer as well, and they were going to Birmingham, Paddington, you know, anywhere where there was a coloured situation. And um, I remember Chris saying, to, do you know, have a listen to this record. It's a Jamaican record, you see. And um, it was by Roy and Millie. And there was this strange, eeky, very odd voice. Um, and both Harry and myself said, My, yes, that's, <laughs> she's different. And he said, well, the next time I go back to Jamaica, I'll make some inquiries about her. Well, he did. And what then happened was, I remember him telephoning us from Jamaica and saying, I found uh, Millie. What do you think? We said, well, bring her over. Well, there is the next big hit we had. My Boy Lollipop. Now that was six million, eventually. So recorded in the UK, I think Ernest Ranglin, the Jamaican jazz guitar player, he did the arrangement. I think Harry Robinson had got quite a tie up with phonogram. And an A&R man there called Jack Baverstock. And that is how we really formed a relationship with Photogram. But what we also always did was we only licensed to the UK so that we could go where we wanted in the States or any other market keep on running. Big, big hit, young Stevie Winwood and Spencer. I didn't find them, Chris did. 
and how Chris found them was it was uh, Millie, my boy Lollipop, Birmingham program, Thank You Lucky Stars. But you had to, if you were on Thank You Lucky Stars, what you had to do was you had to stay overnight in Birmingham. So Chris went to an R&B club, walked into the R&B club and he heard this voice. And of course it was young Wingwood. And I remember him coming back off the week because I'd fixed all the deals, the Thank You Lucky Stars. I worked like a bloody maniac. You know, because there I was, because I was making money out of every plug and, uh, that I could get. Uh, and I remember Chris came back and he was very excited. He said, well, listen, I've heard this and this uh, young 14 or 15 year old kid played piano, guitar. He said, sensational. And I think the great thing that he did at those days was Georgia on my mind. He did it as a sort of absolutely amazing.